Hi there, it's uh, Timmy Joe. I make videos about computers here on the internet, and uh, I had some thermal paste sent to me the other day. You know, I got some I bought myself. You know, got some weird stuff here I bought at our local electronics store. It says like MG Chemicals on it. Uh, you know, it's like heat transfer compound. Doesn't matter which one you use. Does it really matter? Like, will it really affect your build at all? I always wondered if, uh, you know, it's good to save the good stuff for the good builds and, you know, if you're just putting together a crappy system or whatever to fire up, you know, whatever, it doesn't matter, whatever you got on hand. But uh, I want to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments whether you have, like, a specific brand you really like, if you've done testing yourself or have a use case scenario for some, you know, specific kind. Uh, I hear a lot of good things about this uh, Arctic uh, M MX4 stuff and, uh, you know, Noctua, they, they, they know what they're doing when it comes to, you know, this stuff, so. So, cue an intro, and we are going to uh, flip over there to a Core i5 test system I have all set up using a Cooler Master uh, Hyper 212, and we're going to, you know, clean the CPU and uh, put all these on here, and I will give you some real, real life, real world test results right after this. <laughs> All right, so we got our grease, we got our stuff in the thingies, we got our test bench, we're all ready to go. So the methodology here will be, we've got a test bench, it's a Core i5 3570 k It's overclocked to four gigahertz, because you could do that back then. With the non-K versions, you could overclock them a little bit. And uh, so, you know, it's, it's overclocked pretty decently, and you know, there, you know, it's got a Cooler Master e, uh, Hyper 212 on it, so it's pretty good at maintaining temperatures, as well as we're gonna keep the uh, side panel off the case for this methodology and testing. What we'll do is we, I've already applied actually the deep cool to this. We leave it on for five minutes, get a baseline temperature. Then we're gonna run Ida 64 for 10 minutes and see how hot it gets. We're gonna shut the system down. We're going to clean the die after we've removed the, uh, the cooler with this stuff. This is uh, Arctic Clean. It's the system I bought as part of a deal with this stuff. So I don't know, it's pretty good at removing thermal grease. And uh, I believe it's just Goo Gone and some demineralized water or something like that, but uh, works pretty good. So we'll clean it with the same system every time and reapply the thermal paste, put the cooler back on then let it idle for five minutes, run uh, Ida 64 for 10. We're gonna see, is there any temperature difference? Is it degrees or is it like 10 degrees between all of these? I'd like to know kind of like a use case for this stuff. So uh, stay tuned, we'll run through its paces and we'll see, I'll get, grab some screen grabs and you know, some B-roll of me switching the paste and then we'll head back over to the studio for a final conclusion. <laughs> Okay, lots of testing, and I'm actually double the testing, but we'll get to that in a second, okay? Uh, but I got just a few caveats before we get too far into which one is the best, which one should you use, blah, blah, blah. Um, the methodology here is kind of flawed because I think, number one, it depends on, uh, you know, which type of cooler you're using. Uh, so I can't test for all different types of coolers, whether you're using the stock cooler, uh, a high tower cooler like I am using there, or the, uh, you know, an AIO or something like that, or a custom loop. Maybe, there are, you know, some variables, this might be better than this in that specific situation, you know, whether you're on an AIO or a tower cooler or, or the stock or, you know, copper versus whatever, metal types that are on the bottom, you know, whether it's using heat pipes or not, I, who knows. But, you know, I, I think I got to some pretty good results 
for you non-enthusiasts, non-crazy overclockers out there. Uh, throw this up here. This is the Core i5 I was just showing you guys. About an hour and a half's worth of testing. It's fairly easy to conclude that it um, doesn't matter whether you're using this uh, MG Chemicals stuff that's not really meant for computers or the Noctua stuff or this or that. You're within you know two degrees at load. Uh, at, ten, at 10 minutes anyways maybe if we went for you know an hour's worth of testing it might go up a couple more degrees but i think that uh system is a pretty good example of uh you know a higher end system it's a core i5 it's overclocked a little bit with a an aftermarket cooler that's known to be a pretty good one on it uh and but the tdp on it's not that bad and you know what i'm actually surprised that it performed this well it never went over 70 degrees even at four gigahertz that's pretty cool so i was kind of distraught with the, those you know findings there's no real you know difference between all these things but i thought that can't be true Let's put it to its limits. I want to see like high temperatures here. So I've got my Ryzen build here and I didn't want to do the testing on this because it's my editing computer. It's a pain in the ass to take it apart and, you know, be using it well. Uh, I'm doing a video, but whatever, I did it anyways. <laughs> so uh, I retested every single one of the thermal compounds with uh, my Ryzen system here. And I know that my Ryzen system is at like max temperature. We, you know, I've done several videos about this, trying to get you know good temperatures in this. And then to make matters even worse, I got these lights in here and it's, it's warm out. I'm still, I'm in the basement. It's still pretty you know chill down here compared to like a hot muggy upstairs or outside. But the temperatures have been rising in here ever since the summer started. So, you know, this is at an all-time high. Plus, I just got rid of my RX 480, which was a blower style. It was really nice to have in this system. Uh, and I've been using an R9390X, uh, probably one of the hottest cards I've ever had the pleasure of messing with. Uh, it has my main card in here. And as you saw, see in this video, it's as big as the freaking case. So there's very little airflow to the graphics card. I have to have the uh, uh, fans at 40% minimum to get any sort of cooling in it. And uh, that's gonna hurt my CPU temperature. So I actually had to lower my overclock uh, and I'm glad I kind of did this testing because I was running 3.95 gigahertz and if I had put my computer at a heavy load for a while, probably would have hit you know thermal limits. Uh, so I, I brought it down to 3.8 gigahertz because I thought that was a good kind of middle ground uh, for testing because as we'll see, right here uh this this compound is not a good idea at all in fact it did not even pass the test uh because i was too worried that it was going to uh damage my system or something get get like being over 100 degrees celsius on my cpu package that's not ideal at all and this went to 106 before i just stopped the test entirely uh, so I, I keep in mind, this is uh, in a weird case with weird ventilation and I have a really hot graphics card that's filling the whole bottom of the case now. So this is like worst case scenario for this stuff, but, uh, never had, um, I 64 stop the test. So that, that I feel all right when, you know, so it'll, it'll stop the test if it's getting too hot and it never did that. It might've done that with this. So in order of the uh, actual, you know, at, at these high intensity loads, how good the thermal paste actually was, we'll start off with the lowest after this, this stuff, this crap, this, uh, MG chemicals stuff. It, hit 106 after about six minutes and I was like I'm no way I'm going any further but I had already tested with the Noctua stuff and I knew that it it can stay at around 101 after 10 minutes so uh, I knew that there was already a variation there so I uh, hit 106 on with the crap stuff and then this deep cool stuff which is a little bit cheaper uh, the Z5 it did 102 after 10 minutes um, and so you know it, it it was all right, I guess. It didn't hit 106. Uh, and then, uh, surprisingly, the Arctic Silver also did 102. Um, and I thought this was pretty good stuff. I've been using it for a long time. 
uh, but you know, this has no affiliation with this Arctic company, as far as I can tell. Uh, but yeah, it, it's not as good as it used to be, or, or something. I just it didn't perform as well. But oh, we're talking one degree here, so it's not so bad. The Noctua, though, uh, did 101, and uh, it never went over that after 10 minutes, so it's a second best, or a runner-up. But this stuff, the uh, Arctic MX-4, is actually the best one here and that's what I've been hearing so uh, it never went over 100 degrees after 10 minutes and that's what I left in the system here now uh, and uh, it seemed to have you know all, all of them idled sort of the same but as you can see in the graph here it did uh, did alright so uh, what's the best stuff that I have that you should be using well uh, this Arctic MX-4 uh, is pretty damn good stuff, you know, for high overclocking, it seems to maintain a good temperature or a good th uh, transfer of the thermals, but, uh, you know, really any of this stuff is doing pretty good as long as you're not really maxing your, your stuff out. Put this whole computer in, uh, you know, the case that the i5 was in with three giant fans sucking in and a couple fans sucking out and some real good airflow and uh, you know not have the graphics card be a factor in providing heat and we could you know easily use any of these thermal compounds and not really wink an eye so blink wink an eye blink an eye i'm timmy joe thanks very much for sticking around this has been a long video but i thought it was a uh, you know pretty interesting stuff uh and uh, i spent a lot of time testing so uh there's a contest you could win uh, a whole ryzen uh, motherboard ram and cpu combo check it out there's links to it at the end of the video. Uh, help me hit 10,000 subscribers. Help me hit 100,000 subscribers. And I will, no, it's help me hit 10,000 and I will draw those prizes. And follow me on Twitter for an extra chance to win. You can retweet some stuff there. Uh, but uh, if the contest rules are all in there and I'm out watching me join Instagram and Twitter, I really do appreciate you following me along. But uh, in conclusion, this stuff's probably, you know, within a degree or two, actually the best stuff you can use right now. Arctic MX4. And uh, sure, I'll, I'll recommend using this thermal compound if you got to go and buy yourself some but uh any of uh you know if they've got a a, a main brand label on them you're probably all right <laughs>